Some of the things he told me I'll never forget. When Shelby signed on for this project, she wasn't sure what to expect. Interviewing area men and women, documented detailed stories of war, many of which the veterans haven't even shared with their families. I said, so have you told your grandkids this? And he said, no, I would never tell my grandkids this. And so then we asked him, well, have you told your wife? Have you told your kids? And he said, no, I would never. And so that was just very interesting to see why, I mean, he was a complete stranger to me, why he would want to open up to me, but not his family. And um, that I guess that was just really hard. It went right to my heart. I have one son that I've shared some stories with. I don't really talk to my family. I talked to my grandson through my writing. <laughs> That's just, and now that I think about it, I, I talked here, I like to talk. I talk here a lot. I've never said these things to my family. I'll talk at a presentation at a school, things that I've never said to my family. Protecting them from the memories that have haunted him. And we walked single file through the jungle. There was like 350 of us and uh, the Viet Cong took us in the middle and wiped out the first half and they came back after us. And we started taking heavy fire and mortar rounds. So I'd go, follow me, follow me, the old cliche, follow me, this way. And I turn around and some of the guys are going the other way. So I turn around and try to get them to follow me. And as I turn around, I get hit with a mortar right in the back. So had I been going forward, I probably would have got it in the face. These veterans really let you into their lives. Telling honest stories fear, courage, and duty. And so we really had a real purpose for going to war. And of course the results today is, look at South Korea compared to North Korea. So much on the line, so much expected from young men and women who are the same age as these students are right now. I don't want to really graduate because I don't want to go out into the real world. Like, that kind of scares me. And then these guys, like, not only did they go out into the real world, they went out over to different countries and, you know, were fighting for us and, you know, risking their lives. Making choices that would not only put their own lives at risk, but the lives of so many others. He was the one sending guys out to the battles, and he talked about how it was, you know, really difficult to tell some guy, like, hey, you're going here, here's your car, like, and then some of them never came back. And, I mean, that had to be really difficult. I couldn't imagine, like, knowing that half the people you're sending out aren't going to ever make it back. And the man who had to be convinced to stop fighting for the good of his men. The rest of his uh, group would have to force him to like lay down for an hour or two and they would just like stand around him in a circle and like wait, let him rest for a while and kind of protect him. But he didn't want to sleep because what if something happened to one of the other guys? You would at least have some rest. You have to rest for our protection. So after a bad night, I would lay down for a couple hours and that's when I got my sleep. But we did, I didn't sleep at night. Daylight wasn't much better for her, Judith. Pilots exposed in the air. I think there were 25 of them, pictures of 25 guys in this boat that were killed with me. Right there they are. They're all, that, they're all young men, all of them in their 20s. Uh, with my kind of Irish attitude or temper or whatever it is, uh, when they shot at me, I shot back. I kicked those two machine gun chests. I had six machine guns with 2,400 rounds of ammunition. And I come down, and I meant business. I got right on the ground. I shot everything up I could. And of the man who had a fear of heights, things like ladders and Ferris wheels, who got the call to fly until he could fly no more after his aircraft went down three times in just four days. And his story was so incredible that he was, uh, when he was crash landing his helicopter, and um, that was something that really stuck out to me because he was like in his head thinking, well, I don't know how to do this because they told us that it's impossible and no one survives. Flight surgeon, he dropped his pen, he says, that's it, you're off flight status. And uh, I said, well, how long? And he said, I, I'd asked, a, a week? I said, that would be good, I, I'm so tired. He said, no, minimum of six months. Maybe you will never fly again. 
life-changing experiences that live on in the minds of our veterans, and now in the minds of those tasked to share their stories. It's made me even more curious about just people in general, and also it kind of opened my eyes to how much of a sacrifice it really is for them. They're truly a part of my life now. I mean, I think I'll keep in touch with some of them, and it's just, it's, it's an awesome honor to, you know, I guess to get chosen to help with this project here at St. Ambrose, and it's definitely something that I'll never forget.